Hello everybody, Puzzle Piece is back with another uh, story from Perceptions of the Dead. Uh, we are in a house, uh, we're back with Tyrone, who I think is kind of the main character in this whole three-part story series. Um, we've met a girl, we don't really know her name, we just know her as Neighbor Girl, and she's in the house with us, and she could see the um, uninvasive ghost, uh, the the um, clipping, the clipper ghost, uh, that was hanging on the ceiling. Um, but now we had something like a Slender Man, uh, into the picture, and Tyrone apparently can't deal with that. Like, he's like, that's above my league. She gasps, then stops her breath. Well, I think Slender Man's in the house now. Silence falls as even the clicking stops. Ooh. It's inside. Oh god, it's here. Why did I come here? Wait, why did I come back here? The ghost on the ceiling scuttles away, hurrying up the incline above the stairs. Yep, she doesn't like it I either. Steady my breathing. Slowly, I lean over and around the corner, down the hallway to the back half of the house. There he is. As still as the grave, it stands. A silhouette in the hallway. Fuck. Should I move? Should I run? I think it moves quicker than you do. The decision is made for me as a hand closes around my own. The sight is gone as I feel myself tugged backwards. I turn, following the girl from across the street up the stairs. Why are we going upstairs? There's nowhere to escape from there. Well, Clipper Girl went that way, so... It's too late to change my mind. Okay. Behind well. me, at the foot of the stairs, it stands. Still as stone. Run! I flee, retreating to the safety of the master bedroom, locking the door. What was I thinking? I should have just kept running. Why did I stop? Why did I think you would be different than anyone else? Okay, she has a connection to this. What? I thought you were strong. I mean, you are strong, that's obvious. You were able to travel so far. I just took a plane. <laughs> Jesus, you're that strong? You can keep up that level of manifestation long enough to fly on a plane? What? What? Yeah, I know! I mean, I can appear within ten miles of where I died, compared to the <gasps> boy that those creatures devoured. You're dead? What are you talking about? I've never met a ghost as strong as you. Okay, did we just pull some six cents, uh, six cents shit here? <laughs> I'm not dead. Abruptly, she stops in her tracks. Are you kidding? How can you be so strong and not realize you're dead? I'm not dead. Look, it doesn't matter what you think, because in a moment that thing is going to come in here! She grimaced, holding back tears. It's going to come in here and kill me again. Again? I'm not ready for that. Dying once was bad enough. Okay, so you're the dead one. For a oh! moment, the veneer fades and I see her. Bloodied and bruised. She looked like she had been hit by a truck. Y you're a ghost?! Splinters hit my shoulder. I wheel around, finding my blade in motion as fluid as only practice can provide. The creature fills the doorway like a tombstone, and then it moves. Like oil sliding across a hot pan, the creature sidesteps me, ignoring me as if I were nothing more than a piece of furniture. Okay, so it is going for her. It approaches the girl, and I hear her scream. I scream, reality becomes a blur, and I bring around my blade. Uh... Aim for the leg. Take it out. The blade vibrates violently, but I feel something give. I, I feel like if you try to aim for the head, it'll just move. Like, I don't think that's it'll work. I feel it before I hear it. A scream like my own. A roar scream? I watch scream? in confusion and horror as a seam tears open across its face. Oh. Then, I watch it tear apart, unhinging its jaw. It steps forward. Oh, uh... Parry the next attack. Uh, leap back. Uh, leap it's back. upon me in a heartbeat, catching me midair. Oh, the shit. blow so hard and fast I see stars. The air knocked me out of my chest. I am numb as I land. Well, I'm dead. I see it lurch towards the girl, her spirit flickering. No! No. 
Not again. Oh. I won't let you! Ooh. The creature turns slowly, looking around as though confused. <laughs> I step toward it, and each of my footsteps seems to burn the ground. Nice. The creature steps back, still silent as the grave. Yeah. I'm lost in what I'm doing. Don't care. I reach out and simply touch the creature. Yeah. Waves oh. of light and color wash over the creature. Okay. Pulse by pulse. The creature's color slowly shifts to match the world around it. Oh. And then, it's simply gone. My okay. breathing steadies, and the color fades. Eventually, the world turns pale, normalcy descending. The creature is simply gone. Okay. What was that? I don't know. I look down. Opening and closing my fists. Oh, you meant that thing that you just did. I don't know. There was nothing left of whatever I had done. Or the slender for that matter. I look around the room, impossibly confused. Where's the girl? No, seriously, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I don't know. Am I supposed to know? Ah, uh, no. Damn, I heard all over. Who are you anyway? Tulip. Tulip. My name's Tulip. Aw. Tulip? Brooks? Yeah. Then who? I turn to watch the scissor girl skitter away. <gasps> oh. I don't know. She's been here since before I died. Okay, so you're actually the daughter. I flop back down, laying flat on the floor, and close my eyes. Okay, so scissor girl is... Dot dot dot. Okay. Interesting. My parents' old house is just as I left it. I wonder exactly how much upkeep Marcus has actually been doing. Judging from the lawn, he's at least mowed it in the four years since I've seen him. Fuck, four years. Yeah. Had it really been that long since I had returned home? Wow, you have a really nice place. <laughs> Too yeah. Wait, what? Your place. It's nice. How are you here? Spirits are tied to places they have strong emotional attachments to. Ah, she likes you. That and... people? Oh, oh no, don't tell me you're haunting me now. She doesn't reply, only blushing. Great, now I've got Sabrina the teenage ghost following me around. <laughs> I'm 26! You died when you were 16, so you look 16 to me. Silence falls between us. Look, just stay out here until I've had a chance to talk with Marcus. I approach the doorway with more than a fair degree of hesitation. What was I expecting? I don't know. Her words echo in my head. It wouldn't be the first time I had encountered a ghost who didn't know they were dead. They would block it out. Their death. Their funeral. They would then avoid anything that would remind them of their death. Like their home. My eyes settle on the front door as it opens, and a larger man steps out. His shaggy, dirty blonde hair is cut the same length as when I last saw him, but his jaw is framed by a neatly trimmed beard. <laughs> He's carrying a blue garbage bag. He only takes two steps from the door before he meets my eyes. Tyrone? 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 <laughs> Tyrone? It had been a long <laughs> wow. time since I'd heard that name. It sounded almost alien. Hey, Marcus. Holy shit, you're alive! I mean, I... I kind of assumed you were. I hadn't been kicked out of your place by your next of kin yet. Man, it's so good to see you. I thought you were dead. Why'd you think that? Maybe because you've been gone for four fucking years? <laughs> what the fuck have you been doing? Fighting ghosts, demons, that kind of thing. Work, mostly. <laughs> I hope you're getting paid buku bucks if you're ignoring your friend for four years. My thoughts trail to my less than impressive bank account. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. What, did you join the military? Chicks dig boys in uniform. <laughs> Is that how you picked up the chick? You could see her? What chick? The chick that's been staying in your room for the last month? What? Showed up out of nowhere and just kind of waltzed in. She had a key or something. Not very talkative. I don't bother to answer the question. I step past him, his face contorting the worry and confusion. I step inside and feel it immediately. The presence of a haunt. <gasps> oh, okay. I walk towards my room. Yeah. The door is open, and she's sitting. Oh, okay. 
Just reading. Hi. I don't recognize her, but she's clearly dead. The hair bleeding up the walls and tangling up towards the cow skull are dead giveaways. Uh, yeah. Those aren't normal. Man, I'm sorry. Is she just some homeless chick that picked the lock or something? She seemed like she owned the place. I assume you knew her. She said she was waiting for you, too. Well, apparently, she had a normal-looking outward manifestation. I know for a fact she didn't die here. Yeah. And she's been here for a month. She must be incredibly powerful. Yeah. Okay, man. Your silence makes me think you might know her. But there's something awkward about your relationship you're not telling me. So I think I'll let you two talk. <laughs> But if you fucking leave without talking to me about whatever the fuck you've been up to since you left, I swear I'm gonna kill you. Hard to do. <laughs> Marcus walks away, closing the door behind him. It's kind of unfortunate. I don't have a moment to enjoy the fact that his threatening of my life confirmed that neighbor girl had been wrong. I was still alive. <laughs> Unlike this girl. Who are you? Look, I know it's not the best question, but really, I'm a mess. I had been almost completely convinced that I was undead until a couple of seconds ago. Tyrone, I had been expecting something more noteworthy for something like you. Something? I was expecting Damien, perhaps. Oh. You should really consider answering one of my questions soon. <sighs> what? How can someone so powerful not know they are dead? I can feel the hairs on the back of my neck and my forearms rise. No, I was alive. Was alive. The simple answer to that is that you're not dead. An anomaly, but not dead. Like, what are you? Unlike you, I am dead. I am dead, and I am happy to continue being so. I like being here. I don't want to leave. Hey, this is my house. Not your house. I mean, the material world. You see, I'm too strong to so easily fade, and I've been here a long time. Then... I'm more than strong enough to attract the attention of the gnolls. Oh. The... Yes, like the one you killed. The gnoll, okay. Managed to do to it. So the slender. Do you even know, by the way? Our... Yes, I can read thoughts. Oh, that helps. S Sorry, I'll stop. I glare. My name is Ripley. Ripley? I am a ghost. Ripley's believe it or not. <laughs> she grins. And I would like very much to stay that way. Okay. So, that's a... Uh... So, you're a ghost? Or is she a ghost? Are you both ghosts? Yeah. Am I a ghost? Am I a ghost? Oh, man. Oh, Marcus. I knew that Chili had gone bad. I swear I'll buy better Tupperware in the next life! <laughs> okay, calm down, Marcus. Okay, I guess that's it. Hmm, so I don't really know what happens now. Um. Oh, will we get this screen again? Okay, um. Nice. I like the stories. They're pretty quick um, and interesting. I like Tyrone. He's a really cool guy. Um, didn't really get this story, though. I think this was just, like, a side thing. Like, if it was just Tyrone stuff, it would make sense. But, like, with having uh, Jill Count's story, I was like, I, I don't know what's going on. But I hope you all enjoyed it. I certainly did. Um, the voice acting was really well done. Um, and I still love her cat shirt. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to uh, look at my other videos, go right ahead. Uh, there's many different types. Um, there'll be more videos coming out soon. And, uh, yeah, so this is Puzzle Pieces, signing off.